Well, another excellent match, wasn't it? There with uh, Peter Gader coming out on top. He's Denmark's hope in the men's singles. Here's India's hope in the women's singles as Saina Nawal takes on Ip Wee Pin, the 24-year-old from Hong Kong and the number 14 seed. The players on court with uh, Adam's best of that. Bit of history between these two have met uh, quite a bit recently. I know, Jill, you watched them uh, in action at the Asian Games. Yes, in fact, that uh, was the last time they played against each other, but that tournament doesn't count towards world rankings and therefore doesn't show in the head-to-head -head matches. But it was, in fact, Ipui Yin who won on that occasion. So big upset because Sina Nawal was the number two seed at the Asian Games in Guangzhou. She is uh, the golden girl of Indian badminton and probably Indian sport as well, particularly uh, regarding the uh, women. She is a huge star back home and a lot of expectations on this 21-year-old shoulder. As you can see, she is world number six. She has been higher than that this season. She's been high as number two in this season. She's had her ups and downs after winning five titles last year, but an ankle injury in December just set her back a little bit at the start of the year. But she says she's not scared of the Chinese players. They're obviously top four in the world rankings. She's put a lot of hard work in, and she reckons she's in her best form and her best shape. Well, she came through in just 26 minutes against the young Irish girl, Chloe McGee, in round two. And here's her opponent, Ip Weepik Yin of uh, Hong Kong, who, uh, as opposed to that 26 minute sign I took to get through, took an hour and 10 minutes against Michelle Lee yesterday, eventually prevailing 21 17 in the final set. Two semi finals this year, but the uh, main thing for her, Jill, is she's been suffering with this knee injury a month out, not 100%, she admits herself coming into this match. So she, she's not sure what's going to happen here. No, but she's a player that has had some outstanding results. She is a, a player that can beat the very best. There's no question of it. Not only has she beaten her opponent, Sina Nawal, twice previously on their four meetings, so it's evenly balanced, two wins apiece. But she's also beaten the likes of Shishin Fung, who, of course, was three times All England champion, twice world champion. So, you know, you don't go around having results like that. Of course, she shot to stardom at the Asian Games in Doha in 2006 when she beat the Olympic champion, Zhang Ning, from China in the quarterfinal stage and went on to reach the final. So a silver medalist at the Asian Games five years ago and a bronze medalist last year at the Asian Games. Just before this match gets underway, I just want to point out that the defending champion has just lost in the men's singles, has just lost the first set. Chen Jin has uh, just lost to uh, first set 21-18 to AJ Jayaram of India. As we look at uh, the service judge there, Ian Ross, of course, as we saw, uh, Lawrence Best of the umpire. But uh, oh, that, would, that would be a, a hell of an upset in the, uh, in the men's singles there if, if uh, AJ Jayaram can continue to pull that one off. Still plenty to go. But obviously our attention here on the show court here is this matchup between Ip Wee Yin and Sina Nawal, and it should be another terrific match. Well, she played so well yesterday, Sina. She was really happy with the way she disposed of Chloe McGee. And she's off to a similar kind of start here, just the first point, of course, but lovely play. Good. good. Must have been close. And she's finding the range early on, isn't she, Sina? That's good, though, as well. One. 
Stu, I know obviously you've seen a lot of matches over the years and uh, always hard to distinctly remember one particular one, but from what I understand in the Asian games, there was quite a bit of mind games going on and Sino afterwards, I was reading quotes from her saying that she was upset with the way her opponent here was questioning her and uh, the shuttle every time she went to serve, she was questioning whether the shuttle should be changed. Yes. <laughs> so there's what, a little bit of hit. What, what more what, can I add? Well, what uh, I'm trying to get at is that there might be a little bit of antagonism here between the two, or is that completely just left in the past? Um, well, I mean, Sina, there was huge expectations on oh. her. She was the number two seed what? at the Asian Games and so desperately wanted to do well. And, uh, you know, it was a very, very intense contest, I have to say, in the quarterfinal between these two players. Um, if we, in, well, there have been other players that she's played against where there's quite often disputes as to whether the shuttle should be changed or not. It's very much become a feature of badminton One. now, which I find very disappointing. You know, that the psychological games and, you know, are coming into badminton more and more as far as I was concerned when I was playing. You know, if somebody wanted to change a shuttle, I loved it because I always knew that a so, so crisp uh, new shuttle was going to suit me. So I'd happily change the shuttle. Five. Whereas now players say, oh, it's a lucky shuttle, it's suiting me, or oh, I haven't won a rally with this one, I want it changed. Or, you know, a bit like the tennis players with, you know, asking for the same ball back, or, yeah. you know, and it's all oh, psychological. So small called. So 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 small called above the waist. Six. Yeah, yeah, lost. Two. Clearly showing there. And, and above the waist. Ibuyin does get called a lot for a high serve. Now, I thought that was flat as well, very high. Now, perhaps I want to just explain a little bit about serving below the waist. Yeah, please do, because it's not... Because the waist in badminton is not what you and I call a waist. Yes. It's Seven. defined Two. as below the lowest rib. So in case people are thinking, well, all these serves are above the waist, there is a definition in badminton of waist. And it's is that sort of, I don't know, I know we're going all around the world, but kind of like Simon Cowell's waist. He wears his trousers very high, doesn't he? <laughs> Some people know where I'm going with that one. <laughs> many, many well, won't. I'm afraid you've lost <laughs> me on that. Hey, two. Start that Sino would want it. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, that's the kind of form that's in it. You know, it's too early to say she's you know, definitely going to stride through here, but that's the kind of touch and form that's going to give her encouragement as she progresses, should she do so. She really hit the ground running yesterday. Very impressive then. Pretty faultless so far as well. There we go again. Another terrific cross-court shot. And then the little touch at the net. It's just almost perfection. 11, 2, indoor. Yeah, I was speaking to her coach, Pulela Gopichand, the day before the tournament started. There he is. And he was saying to me, how well training had gone and how she was really getting back to full fitness and felt she was in better condition. You know, and you have to remember that already this year she's been in three finals, winning one of them, the Swiss Grand Prix. But most recent tournament, of course, was the Indonesian Super Series event where she reached the final and only lost out in what a terrific match against Wang Yi Han, who was the number two seed here. Wang Chen, coach to Ipui Yin, who was silver medalist at the World Championships in Kuala Lumpur. 
Well, six points in a row to the interval Eleven, for Sina Newell. Play. First class performance so far from the Indian player. We've seen some interesting matches, particularly in the, the doubles. I know Peter Gator was stretched, but some of the top players in the singles, you know, Lee Chong Wei, we saw it from Wang Shizian, and now from Sina Nawal here. It's been very impressive badminton they're putting together right from the very start of the week. Needed a bit of relief there for it. We in. I suppose when you've had a knee injury like she has and you played an hour and ten minutes yesterday, it's going to take a bit out of you. Yeah, she's a very physical player in her style of play anyway. It we in. Long. 43. Oh, it's just delightful. It really is. What a super shot. Using all four corners of the court, Sina Nawal, pushing her opponent to the back, bringing her forward, pushing her to the back again. And there's not much at the moment that it we in can really do. She's not exactly making huge errors, is she? She's just being outclassed. No, and I think one of the problems for it we in is the fact that she doesn't really have the same range of shots, her repertoire or rather her strengths, is very much her physicality. On the court. She's a great runner, she's a very good athlete. But where does she play her winners? An awful lot of the time, she relies on outlasting her opponent. And if she's not physically at her best, which obviously I'm suggesting she's not, then we, we might see this kind of result. It's unbelievable stretch of scoring. Called. 93. We've been on court for eight minutes. Sina Nawal already two points away from taking the opening game. Demoralised at the moment. It we. She, uh, as I said, hadn't made too many errors, and suddenly they are creeping in. She's flummoxed. Bang. It's a stroll. And Wembley for Sina Newell, that's for sure right now. I was going to use the expression, she's hardly broken sweat, but that's not quite true, is it? female athlete I guess in the world media is Mirza tennis player yep. but uh, she's dropped out of uh, high ranking at the moment 
Well, let's look at that. Unforced errors, too many from Ipuyin. And look at the overhead winners from Sina Nawal and net runners. Uh, none from Ipuyin. Well, she only won. She only won three points in the whole set, so yeah. not surprising we can't see too many winners there. Yeah, when I mentioned the physical problems, she is uh, feeling it, isn't she? As I said, an hour and ten minutes on court yesterday. And uh, the fact that she lost that opening game 21-3, it makes you feel more tired as well. Yeah, the body language, though, is, is not good, <laughs> is it? Extremely negative. Second game. Lowell, play. One, love. Yeah, there are some days where you just think that, you know, everything you try, just not working, and you just sort of beat up on yourself. discipline to say, you know, I'm not going to allow that to happen. What's it like, though, for, for signing there you are here? It's just, just wide so with that one. She, she's played Chloe McGee first game, uh, first oh. match up, and very comfortable, yeah, straight sets, a breeze, really. Here she is again up against another opponent who's pushed her in the past, but it's a breeze again. You know, if, if it goes according to the way the first set does, then, you know, it's going to be over in double quick time. And then she's suddenly going to come up against in a match, surely, you know, likely to play one sin in the next next round where it's going to be a completely different story, different feeling. How hard is it to go from two matches like that to a, a key match like the one she's probably going to face? Um. It depends on the personality of Sina Nawal. From my own personal experience, you know, the quicker I get matches over with, the more confidence I drew from that. So even if, you know, they were relatively easy matches, I loved it, you know, because then I, I, I felt even more confident. I'm in good form, right? It doesn't matter who I'm playing next. It, you know, it might be the former world number one, but I'm ready for her. So. You know, I think Sina will react in that similar sort of a way. As far as, uh, you know, she's looking very, very sharp as it is. So, you know, it's not as if um, she doesn't get the practice or the, you know, the warm-up session early in the morning when the players come down to train before play starts for the day. Her coach will be making her sharp, putting her under pressure and so on. So she's, she's still getting the intense workout whether it's on the practice court or whether it's on the match court so i don't think it would be a problem to her because she had Five. six weeks before Five. here so she in terms of having to play key points that's what i'm getting at you know you know those moments in matches which can swing one way or the other she's had six weeks without any competitive badminton and uh, badminton so far in this in this in this world championships and much of it is also down to her super play it hasn't been that competitive either no, but the last tournament she played, she was very competitive. She reached the final in Jakarta in Indonesia. So, you know, you still, even if you've had six weeks of intense training, you still draw on that experience from the last time you played and and, and get confidence from that as well. Yeah. We're all going to plan here for Simon and Ewa. So it's so fault called again, once again. Same story. <laughs> Above the waist. Ian Ross saying that she's starting in the right position, but by the time she hits the shuttle, she's too high. Six, three.
see the mental turmoil, can't you, with it being... <laughs> Every corner foul. Every little drop shot, just clearing the net. Yeah, she's certainly got the Midas touch at the moment, hasn't she? 191. 220, the fastest so far. This week in the uh, women's game, one CLE. 220 kilometers per hour. Couple of Indians in the top five there in the women's double, the partnership of Ashwini Bonapar and Joala Gutta, both broken 200. the match. Spike then here for the Hong Kong player. We in who fell at the same stage in the World Championships last year, third round to Wang Lin. Yeah, of course, went on to take the gold medal. I will be hoping it's a case of uh, lightning striking twice. 11, 5, no, it's uh, comprehensive so far, isn't it, from uh, Sina? really good to see uh, the auditorium Jill now is uh, getting towards capacity here Been some good crowds uh, a lot of Danish fans have been around today of course with a lot of their players in action but big support for the Indian players with uh, Saina on the court now and of course uh, AJ Jerem on the adjacent court trying to push the defending champion and of course uh, Friday Saturday and Sunday we'll be getting a uh, very close to being a seller. Well, once again, Play. Richard, I have to say I have my concerns the way that Yip Kui Yin was sort of bent over double there. You know, I don't think she's necessarily out of breath. And so there's a big gulp of air there. It's more her mental state of mind, I suspect. Um, and Every athlete in every sport, I'm sure, is taught at a very young age. I certainly Five. was. You know, never let your opponent see when you're down or when you're hurting. You know, it's okay to let them see when you're you're up and you're happy, but never let them see that you're you're beating up on yourself. Oh, that's superb! So crisp the way she hit that. 13. Really a half smash. Five. Just going for angle and placement. It's very interesting if uh, when you watch these replays and you see Sina Nawal's overhead shot, Ipui Yin, I think, is calling it a day. Yep. She's had enough. That's the end of that. And I mentioned the fact that she's had a, this knee injury, Ipui Yin. And well, she's got her right ankle heavily strapped at the moment, so. Uh, I think that's yeah. possibly yeah. been more of a problem. Yeah. Well, that's a disappointing way for that to come to an end. Well, Sina Nawa in this World Championships hasn't even, even been on court for an hour, and she's through to the quarterfinals. She won't care, though, will she? She, uh, she knows there's some tough matches to come, but uh, she was well on her way to victory when if we decided to call it a day. So 
India's darling is into the last eight and she will take on well most likely the number three seed Wang Sin but perhaps Petya Nidojeva who meet tonight one of the last matches on court the uh, number 12 seed we'll try and push the top Chinese player there for the right to meet Sainanewa in tomorrow's quarters.